On today's Motor House, we are here at the Great British Land Rover Show at Stoneley. Welcome back to Motor House and our coverage of this year's Great British Land Rover Show. Stay tuned for our highlights of the standout cars from the show, the parts and accessories keeping them on the road, as well as highlights from the off-road course. Joining me today is my friend Greg. Why don't you join us both as we get straight into the action at the Great British Land Rover Show Stoneley 2021. Let's go. It is quite an eye-catching beast, this one. It is only two-wheel drive, though, so Maybe there is a question, eh, is a Land Rover really a Land Rover anymore if it's two-wheel drive? Greg's in love. Oh yeah. Big old 6BT Cummins in here. I mean, I'm not a diesel person, but you have got to appreciate the quality of the install on this. It is quite astonishing. And uh, that's, a, that's a thing. Do you want to see your coolant as you drive? Well, you can with this one. Well, from a diesel converted Land Rover to something that is altogether much more modern, much more cleaner. Debate in the comments, let me know what you think. But here is the Electric Classic Car Company's converted electric Defender. A lot of high voltage. Really like the look of this one, Greg. On the shelf a bit. I, I, on, on the fence about this one. Doing a good job of it. Oh, I like this a lot. Got a bit of a beach runner vibe to it going on. And of course, the fact that it is electric means there's no transmission tunnel. So actually look at that. It is a usable three-seater up front. I quite like this wood. Greg spotted some air ride, some sick air ride. How's your fitment, bro? I don't know, mate. I don't know. It's 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 not my thing. I'm sure it's someone's kind of thing. It's it's been very beautifully built. I mean, interior. that is a stunning interior, isn't it? It's just missing a few scratches down the side from leaning. I'm just a bit old-fashioned, mate. I think that defenders are off-road vehicles. You they know. are, but everyone's got to have a bit of everything, haven't they? It doesn't do for us all to be alike, does it? You might remember from the coverage of the gathering is uh, Greg had the back of his Land Rover fitted out as a camper. Did, yeah. um, not quite as luxurious as this, though, mate, is not, it? Not yet. <laughs> not yet. We'll get there. It's not it's, yet. It's a work in progress. Work in progress. Yeah. Oh, boy. This, this one, chunky. That is a whole lot of chunky Defender, that not is, isn't it? stuck in the sand pit at school, are you? Isn't it? You're not. <laughs> these, uh, these will definitely help you uh, when you're dropping off uh, Tarquin and Jemima at the school gates. It's a true Land Rover, it's got a leak. Oh, well. It's a bit incontinent. It's a bit incontinent. It's, it's the real deal, then. Blimey, that is, uh, that is a piece of kit. I'm a little bit lost for words on this one. And uh, a winch that probably cost as much as some of the Land Rovers here. It's a beast, that, isn't it? Hopefully it's used properly as well. So this kind of demonstrates the variety of, of how people build their Defenders. You can have one stall that's selling luxury upgrades and another one, like here, that's selling extreme suspension upgrades for extreme off-roading, if that's your thing, and why not? So one of the ace things about owning a Defender is they're a giant Meccano kit. They are completely repairable in every way. Here you go, a job that I'm gonna have to do on mine shortly is replacing the bulkhead corners, but here's repair panels. You wanna replace the sills, it's all here. Mud shields, brackets. It's all here, it's all totally repairable. They never die. Old Land Rovers never die. Well, we're here chatting with Stuart. Uh, Ma uh, Mackinor, is that how we have seen a lot of classic Range Rover bits. We stumbled into this. I've had a friend who uh, restores classic Range Rovers, and um, he was doing this area yep. one day, 
And, what um, is that? Is that the fuel? This is the fuel filler on the rear. Neck. Rear, yeah, yeah. Yes. Because notorious for rotting at the back yes. on the classic Range Rover. And he asked if I could make him something that would be uh, look best than what he could actually uh, fabricate. Um, um, now you've shown that you're you're now doing boot floors for classic Range Rovers. Is yes. That, I understand what a lot of people have had to do is modify Discovery boot floors. Is that right? Up until now. Um, what they what they do is uh, they're the, for a later model they are. These are for early um, Range Rovers. Uh, so the, the, the two doors. Yes, the yeah, full yeah. length, yep. two door floor. And we're just uh, in tooling now um, for the uh, steel floor. So that'll be quite exciting. That's absolutely fantastic. Because of course it's been rot that's been the big killer of classic Range Rovers for years, hasn't it? And Unfortunately, yes. And they're at a point now, of course, as, as you and I know, is classic Range Rovers are really desirable and they're starting to be restored it, it, and the values are going it's, up. It's coming. Yeah. It is happening. Um, you always have people who don't really want, they want the end product, but they don't want to put in what you need to put the hard yards yeah. of the restoration. Absolutely. Um, we're, we're prototype sheet metal workers. We come from a, a side where if you start with good foundations, Hopefully, when you put the cherry on the top, absolutely, <laughs> you'll have them. Absolutely, absolutely. Your car's got to have good bones, hasn't exactly. it? Exactly. Got to have good bones. Exactly. So there's some other interesting stuff here as well. What am I looking at here? This, this our tailgate. This is a tailgate skin. Yeah. Um, with the uh, appropriate holes for the. Ah, because it's the external latch one, yes. isn't it? Whatever variation of hole or without holes. I see. So you can do a, a top one for for any year, whether it's yes, like an internal exactly. latch vehicle exactly. and everything. Yeah, super. I think it was in early this year, Land Rover Monthly. Alistair Kuzik, who's a, a photographer for Land Rover Monthly, did a, a breakdown and rebuild of a complete CSK tailgate. Oh, beautiful! Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we did we, we did that for them, and um, that was. The end product was grace. What are we looking at there? A bulkhead side panel. Oh, I know, down in the corner. The, these are for um, oh, the Disco One Soft Dash. Yep. Classic. Yep. Range Rover. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I've got some friends at 2010. I don't know if you've heard of 2010. Okay. They gave me uh, some old ones and we made some new ones. That's absolutely um, fantastic. But originally I, I made them by hand. Uh, uh, with a flat piece of steel across the top, I had the tool cut that shape, put it down like this, and, and made it by hand. I've invested in tooling. Um, tooling's cost me a bit, but hey ho. Um, I can bring the price down now, and I can do it for £250 now, as opposed to £350 a pair. Fantastic. So, I think the British motor industry has made some, some remarkable cars, and I think it is time that, particularly stuff like the classic Range Rovers and whatever, that they are being restored and, and preserved rather than, we were just having a chat over a coffee rather than, you know, being run into the ground in a quarry and then thrown away, you know. Well, I'd like to think those days are over. The Range Rover was ahead of its time. We were just saying the same thing. I was overlooking at the cutaway chassis over there, you know, the, the demonstrated chassis and the technology for 1969 when that was introduced. I know. Stu, thank you so much no, for showing welcome. us all your stuff. It's been lovely meeting you. And, and gosh, if this hasn't fired me up for wanting to do a Resto Mod Classic now, I don't know what will. Well, you're more than welcome to come, uh, come and visit us at our workshop and uh, see how we do everything. Well, you. there's an invite. I'd love to. You're on. Thank no, you very much, thank Stu. You. Thanks Great. a lot. Cheers. As I was saying, giant Meccano kit. Just look at this stuff. Every seal you can imagine, every light, every nut and bolt. Because you're um, you're restoring a short wheelbase at the minute, aren't you, Greg? 1967, so I'm on the lookout for some parts today. Yeah, what, what are you after? Everything. Didn't are, are you having any problems finding parts for it, though? Not on this one, on my other one, which was a six cylinder, I did. Yeah, find that, no that was a bit of an exception, wasn't it? Yeah. There's a few things with those six cylinder engines that can be a bit tricky, it's a but. A rare beast. I mean, by and large, they're very easy to get parts for, aren't they? Usually, yeah. 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 We're here over at the Mayer stand. They're a fairly new game in the chassis and bulkhead world, but we've just had a chat with them. Look at this, including that basically 1,800 quid for a brand new, fully galvanized chassis with a five-year warranty. That seems like fantastic value for money to me. And again, here we go, look, here's a, a complete bulkhead, 
Again, basically 1,200 quid, including VAT, for a fully galvanized new bulkhead. Oh yes, I like to paint it gold. Oh mercy, I'm not the only V8 Land Rover here. Oh, 3.9 litres of fuel injected beauty. How much shock is too much shock, mate? <laughs> oh, my. Good Lord. Jesus. Look at that. Some serious kit. That's some serious stuff. That's, that's Darth Vader's winch right there, isn't it? <laughs> so, Raptor Dashers, Greg, they're interesting, aren't they? Need a lot of switches. Because it is one of the things that lets a, uh, a traditional Defender down like mine is the dash is so plasticky and on mine it's it's quite cracked and it's in a bit of a bad way. So you know there's a there's a plethora of third-party companies that offer various solutions and so on. Once again, isn't it fantastic that there's such an option? Those are nice though. I like that look. The steel binnacles. Yeah. They're very cool. Really nice. Like those. Yeah, that works. It's just having loads of switches to fill them. You can bore on loads of additional crap. Like rocket launchers. Like rocket... Who doesn't want rocket launchers? Hey, Greg. No, no, just no. Is the trailer a flashy? I'm yes. all right. I'm all right. He's not having it, though. He's not no. having it. You should have a techno scene. I'm done with that. In fact, I'm going to lace them over right <laughs> now. <laughs> Yeah, guys, the techno party has come to the Land Rover show. All right. I'm not a big, very, very I'm not a big fan though. I'm not a big fan of of what? Just not a big fan. Great. Stop. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm feeling <laughs> horny. <laughs> Warning for our viewers with epilepsy. <laughs> Greg's getting canvas lust. Ooh. He loves a bit of vintage canvas, does our Greg? Oh, I love it. We're done here, though. Looking at stickers, Greg. Hello, we're getting excited. Take off parts, Greg. Yeah. We do like some used parts, don't we? We do. Ooh, diffs. Hey, you need some diffs. Not at that price, though. <laughs> eh? It's a, eh? a lot of money. Eh? <laughs> Is an imposter. Ooh. Ooh. I do like a Toyota though, so. Nah, you've, yeah, respect has to be shown towards a Land Cruiser, doesn't it? Especially really? the one that's right behind you. Ooh. No, Se 70 Series? Oh, these are proper. The thing is, has that got an oil leak? Probably not, it's a Toyota. Oh. So these are one of the very few 4x4s that you can still buy now that have solid front and rear axles. They're uh, It's ridiculous, the price of them. Now, sadly, very unique, but you can buy these brand new still. You can buy one brand new in Australia. Like they, Apparently, they never, ever sit on a forecourt. They're normally ordered and sold before they even they sit there. Land Cruiser? Yeah, Land Cruiser. Yeah. And you can still buy one, the 70 series, which I think this is. I'm not really a Toyota enthusiast, so I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments if I've got it wrong. Guarantee someone squeezed a uh, 2J into one. You can guarantee it, can't you? The great big turbo. A great big turbo? A great big one. So what you will need if you want your Land Cruiser to go right fast. Up a hill. It must be right, right if it's got a turbo on it, it must be right fast. I've spotted some rusty chod. Have you spotted some rusty chod? Yes. Show the way, Greg. Ooh, there is. Oh, very few things get me excited. There's buckets full of rusty chod. Annoyingly, I have just bought a tailgate, which is a lot more bent than that. Well, we've had a wander around all the trade stands, leaving the show hall now, and now it's We're off to the off-road off course. Off course, isn't it, mate? So hopefully, don't do any damage. Hopefully, hopefully, don't break the car that we're going home in, eh? Yes. And here we are outside. We've got Land Rover themselves, the Land Rover Experience, demonstrating some of the vehicles. Here's the new Defender, showing that it is a proper off-roader. Honest. We're on our way back to the cars en route to the car park for the off-road course, but oh, look at this lovely old deer here. How this nice is, is it to see just an unrestored yeah. Series 1? Absolutely, totally unrestored. 
wearing all its years of wear and tear very proudly. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm back in the car, back in Laura now. Greg's behind me in his Series 2. We're now trundling our way around. You'll see there's uh, quite a few uh, vehicles coming off from the off-road course. We are heading our way there now for some top four-wheel drive off-road action. If we can find where we're going. All right, Greg. All right, here we go. Off-road time. Making sure my diff lock's in. Here we go. Well done, Laura. Good girl. Wait for the person at the top to clear first. All right, let's go. <laughs> easy, easy. Now let's get down into first gear. And just down on engine braking. Here we go. Now this is what they meant for. <laughs> so it's these sorts of situations that that high torque camshaft that I fitted earlier in the year is really built for because on these kind of courses what you really need is just loads of gutsy power from nothing not having to wait for the engine to spool up not waiting for the power curve to kick in just lots of nice, lazy power. I'll tell you why, it's quite a challenging course. This is crikey. Woo! Mercy me. There we go. Ah, good girl, Laura. Good girl. Woo. Right, I'm gonna wait here. Someone's defaulted in front of me. Might need to give you the beans. Please don't back into me, please don't back into me. Go on, give it some, give me the beans, go on. Right, we're we gonna do it. This is interesting. I'm stopped at the worst part of the climb. Are we gonna get over it? Let's have a see. Good girl, Laura, good girl. Wow! Wow, lights on. This is like uh, proper safari driving now. Wow! Cue the extra dramatic music.
Well, she's a chonky girl. Is she going to go round? Yeah, she's going to go round. Come on, girl. There you go. Well, from me, Mr. Bob, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Great British Land Rover Show at Stoneleigh. We'll see you again on another episode soon at Motorhouse.